Hello world, Tom Tinker DIY here. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at the 18650 battery pack that is going to power this portable mini Powerwall project. As you can see here, um, it's entirely put together. In the last video, it was kind of a, um, just a montage of time lapses that went into to building this thing up until the point where I actually tried had to figure out how to put on these um, these bus bars or how to you know get everything to be wired up together uh, you saw me go through and then pre 10 each battery cell both you know the top and bottom of them the positive and negative poles of the batteries um, and then the, the you know the interesting build process kind of stopped there uh, that's because I ran into some issues um, and you know it was my, my first build through of a, of a battery pack like this and um, I had originally planned on using 14 gauge wire uh, that you see here and what I was going that what I was planning to do was to um, loop these around in a U pattern between across one bank and as you're looking at the pack here each column uh, four columns is one bank so here's cell one here's cell two cell three is the last four over here on the left right um, and I was finding it extremely difficult to try to lay this uh, wire down in a pattern and have it laid you know and have it stay put in a in a way that um, that was you know going to be easy to try to solder the fuse wire to uh and i really wasn't liking uh how well that was coming out i was even trying to use a little hot glue and in a couple of areas trying to see if that would help encourage things to to lay down a little better um and i just i wasn't happy with the results that i was getting i even uh went as far as um going over to lowe's and picking up some of this um bar stock aluminum bar stock that is i think it's like three eighths inch thick and an eighth or i'm sorry three eighths inch wide and an eighth inch thick thick um i cut them into to lengths and you know bent them around so that they could lay on the packs um and i just i wasn't really happy with the aesthetics of, of how that was going to turn out to to use this material um so what i ended up doing was um, I wanted to, to try to make something that was a lot more rigid, something where I could just lay it down in a straight line and it would be a lot more rigid to use. And what I ended up doing for the majority of these uh, that you see here going horizontally is this is, uh, I believe, six pieces of 20 gauge pre tend copper wire that I twisted together with an electric drill. Um, and then uh, I cut the length to, to create, you know, as far as it needed to go. And these were, you know, a little clunky and cumbersome to to figure out how to how to get it to twist evenly. And, and then uh, I was trying to do it in very long lengths, and then I, I wasted a lot of a lot of this 20 gauge wire trying to to try to get this to uh, come out, you know, looking halfway decent so I could use it. But as you can see, I did get there. Um, and uh, so what I ended up doing was. Um, I would take two of the three cells on one face and I would just go ahead and and just connect them straight together as you see here uh, so that way all the power coming out of out of this set will go into this set and they're directly connected to each other and then on the other side of the battery pack uh, I did the same thing right it's just offset so that uh, one positive end of the pack is left exposed and, and not already connected to another pack or another set of cells uh, and then of course the other side here. So this ended up being my ground side. Uh, this ended up being my positive side here on the far end. Um, I did this layout where it went uh, facing toward the camera here where it went negative, positive, negative. Um, so that I can do this kind of easy way of meshing it up. But I will tell you that um, there's a lot of risk here. And it's uh, a lot of fire risk or just short, short shorting risk. Uh, because anything that bridges this to that uh, that's conductive my skin is not conductive enough to to to, to, to work across 12 volts here um, but um, there's a lot of risk here so I'm very careful what I set this thing down on what orientation I set it down in um, because this is a whole lot of energy that if it gets a good going it's, it could cause some serious damage pretty quick um, so 
if I was to do this project again, I don't know if I would necessarily take the risk of laying out the cells in this order. I think I would put them all in negative one direction and all positive the other direction um, so that the risk of accidentally shorting out the battery pack uh, to itself um, is greatly reduced by, by doing it that way. Uh, but if you did that, then you've got to figure out how to go from here to the far side and from here to the far side. Um, you know, it's not a terrible thing, right? But it's, it's something to definitely consider here. Uh, one of the other things that you may have noticed from the very beginning of that build video, uh, in the last video, was I actually put in some screws here um, to hold together the, the, the plastic battery holders to the cells themselves because this is intended to be a, a portable battery pack, something that's going to be uh, potentially, you know, tossed around a little bit. Um, I figured it was a little, an easy way to help make sure that um, things kind of get held together and that um, the, the cell holders don't try to pull up on any and strain any of the, uh, the fuse wires that's trying to hold everything together. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily necessary or not, um, but, you know, it is a thing that I did. And what I'm going to probably look into doing when I get closer to um, putting this into an enclosure that I plan on 3D printing is I'm going to take some um, foam core board and just put it across here on both sides to help give it some, some foam padding all the way around it so that it's uh, going to protect it a little bit inside of its enclosure. Um, and then that, um, hey, I may even just do that you know, before I... Uh, get around to actually putting it in the enclosure um, so that uh, I can minimize any risks that I have of you know accidentally sh shorting out this battery pack because uh, it is a bit of a concern as I go to handle this pack I'm definitely um, very cautious of how I pick it up and, and, and where I'm touching it as I pick it up um, just so that I don't break anything or that you know that I don't potentially uh, cause any um, shorts that could that could happen because of the way this pack is laid out but the system runs. Um, so as we can see here, I've got uh, double stranded um, of these. Plugging these together would actually be a really bad thing, and I just realized uh, that's a thing that can happen. Luckily, it won't reach to, to do that. Uh, but yeah, plugging this into each other would be real bad. Um, but it's double stranded, uh, double 14 gauge, uh, so that the, the current load through this battery system is spread out across uh, more than just 14 gauge of wire. It's you know twice that whatever that you know works out to be in the American wire gauge conversion. Um, but um, I've run this battery system uh, at full load under that uh, with that 300 watt inverter back there, and um, I was getting you know 300, 310, 315 watts uh, by running my my desktop PC off of that off of that inverter in this battery pack. Uh, and it was actually getting to the point where it was causing the inverter to shut down and restart, uh, which of course when I did that, then it you know forced shut down my computer. Um, but the PC, when it's um, under very light loads, like just browsing the internet or, or watching YouTube videos, uh, it was pulling you know 70, 80 watts of power. Uh, if something would, would uh, happen where I had to think a little bit, it might spike up in, in power consumption a little bit to about you know 130, 140 watts. Uh, but when you put that system under load and you make that graphics card inside of it, uh, it is kind of a gaming PC, right? And um, you make that graphics card go under load and uh, now that system's pulling 280, 290, 300, 310 watts of power. Uh, and so it, it'll definitely suck down the battery uh, capacity here quite quickly uh, when it's going under that much load. Um, so imagine that, um, you know, if this thing was about 480 watt hours, and you're pulling, you know, 290, 300 watts of energy uh, out, of, out of this system, you're going to get a runtime of about an hour and a half, which, you know, all things considered, that's actually a pretty, pretty good um, runtime for, for that kind of load. Uh, but, uh, you know, I while it can run at that load, this system is not designed for, you know, running that much power for a long period of time. It's meant for running much lower loads for long periods of time like a, a, an led lamp and charging a cell phone uh it can do those for days on days and days you know if you only had to run the lamp at night and charge your phone at night you could you know, go easily three four five days um, on one charge of this battery pack here 
um, just you know using it under those really light loads so that's what the intention of this project was for when when I kind of was putting it together um, when I was running this at the 300 watts the battery pack is this stayed nice and cool all the bus bars stayed cool the cells stayed cool uh, the wiring here going into the harness stayed cool um, the only thing that actually got just a tiny bit warm was the uh, the cables that came with the uh, with the inverter these cables had those battery clips things the the um, the alligator clips or whatever you want to call them and these cables would get a little warm to the touch but uh, nowhere near uncomfortable or nowhere near concerning um, but these were these cables were definitely the the hottest part of the system while it was running um, and then I guess the the last thing that I wanted to make note of here when uh, when I put the system together was to put a balance lead on it uh, so that I could keep track of um, you know what the voltage is I can keep track of the voltage per per uh, cell of batteries um, and uh, so it's a three cell system I just took a, a, a 6s connector here and I took out uh, three of the positive wires and um, I went ahead and put um, the ground to the ground coming off the battery the very first cell is going to be the the closest positive which in this case is on this side so this is the closest positive to uh, to the ground and then if you follow these uh, the follow the positive over here to this negative the next closest positive is here on this side so this is cell two and then of course the battery uh, the current flows um, from these positives to this negative and then, then of course this is the last positive side of the battery um, so this is cell 3 and I went ahead and put these with uh, quick disconnect 2 millimeter bullet connectors um, just so that uh, if I needed to um, you know for whatever reason in fact these may getting be get moved a little bit just so that when I go to put it inside of an enclosure uh, I don't have these cables sticking up causing issues trying to to get things to, to lay down neatly so these these bullet connectors may get moved in here in a little bit when I go to actually put some kind of case around all of this um, but so far I'm extremely pleased with how well this system is working um, I did drain this thing uh, all the way until voltage cutoff of the inverter I went ahead and charged it back up and I put in about 410 watt hours um, of the 480 watt hours that this battery pack contains and um, that's about 85 percent of battery capacity used i would have liked to have seen it get a little bit closer to the the 90 percent mark um, but 85 percent knowing that um, that inverter will shut down prematurely based upon the acceptable voltage range for these lithium ion cells um, you know i knew it wasn't going to get you know 100 percent utilization uh, but I think 85, 85% is uh, very, very understandable and very reasonable. So um, what I'm going to be working on next is actually putting together a DC watt meter uh, so that I can see the voltage, the current, um, the, the total watts that are going through the system. And then I can also see where it's having a cumulative um, uh, discharge of how many amp hours or milliamp hours have been used from this pack uh, because trying to gauge how much capacity you're getting out of the system uh, on a charge cycle um, is not a very accurate representation you have to measure it on a discharge cycle uh, so that's what I'm going to be using that with that watt meter for uh, when I put it together and that's actually going to be uh, in the next video where uh, I'm going to show a bit of the design process of modeling a an enclosure for that uh, electronics devices um, and then um, getting it a 3d printed and then probably you'll take a I'll show you guys what it looks like putting that little uh, meter box together uh, and that'll probably be all here in the next video so I'm excited that all this is running uh, and that it's working and it runs really cool I'm not really anything I'm worried about as far as um, you know heat or anything uh, being a fire hazard other than just the, the layout of the cells and just the risk of shorting out um, the cells here uh, but those are pretty minor things to, to take into account and take care of so that you they are 
much less of an issue. So with that, uh, please guys make sure that you like this video and subscribe for more updates to this project because we, just because the system's running, there's still more content to come for this project. Um, and then also make sure that you're checking out the video description where I will have affiliate links to Amazon. Uh, any products that you purchase through those links uh, will help to support the channel and help fund future projects or future products um, that will go into helping to make this series for you guys. So with that, I'll go ahead and sign off and I'll catch you guys in the next video.